The Ultimate Japanese Sword Reimagined by the Russians. This is a review of Dr. Web Katana, and you are watching the PC Security Channel. So, since this is a brand new product, I want to give everyone a quick intro. So, as it claims over here, Dr. Web Katana is a non signature antivirus, essentially from what I have seen, it is a HIPS program and it restricts access to critical system resources and basically just blocks certain malicious actions. They claim that it does not conflict with third party antiviruses, no configuration required, which I don't entirely agree with, and they're charging you 26 euros per PC per year, which is what a bit to ask, considering this is not a complete solution. It is just a HIPS program or something that can complement and add a bit of zero-day protection to your existing solution. And also a point to note that since it's a signature-less solution, they don't have to spend that much time in development, which kind of means that this per-year pricing is a little bit unfair. It should be maybe a certain price maybe a bit more than 26 euros but it should be a lifetime license because essentially it's just the entire thing is offline so they don't have to work on this on a daily basis like they have to on signatures but anyway all that aside let's take a look at the product itself so one really good thing that I've noticed is Dr. Webb's UI has matured very nicely and now they have a very professional looking UI with proper borders and everything. If we go into the settings we have really basic stuff, our language which we have to set. Do they have Japanese? Yep, there you go. So if, if you're really into the whole katana thing you can go ahead and set your language to Japanese and uh, Maybe that'll protect you better, I don't know. Self-protection. This is what stops malware from shutting down the samurai sword or making it blunt, I guess. Now comes the interesting part, and this is really the core of the program. By default, the operation mode is set to optimal, and they do have some other modes that is medium and paranoid. So those are some of the presets, but if you want, you can go ahead and look at all of the access parameters yourself. I have um, set up a custom rule here just so that I can show you what it's like. So you can add any application and then you can decide whether to allow, ask, or block particular actions. For example, accessing the host file. We have everything set to allow for Malwarebytes because it is a legit program, but you can manually control all of these parameters. Now here's the thing. Um, this is a pretty interesting list, but it's not complete and uh, I can easily think of other ways in which malware could exploit your system without having to go through any of these so once again it's a hips program but um, it's probably not the most comprehensive hips program now in optimal these are the settings that you get so it blocks uh, integrity of running applications I'm not sure what exactly this means but it's set to block integrity of user files block so anything that affects these things is going to be blocked driver loading is allowed image file execution options is allowed and uh, policy auto runs are allowed program auto runs are allowed if you go into paranoid mode a lot of these are blocked and some are set to ask so you go into medium again it's um, a mix between block ask and allow so optimal is the uh, most easy setting and that's what it's set to by default so i guess that's what gives you the least amount of conflicts to test this out what we're going to do is run a bunch of malware this is all zero day stuff we're going to go ahead and try to run these files and we'll switch between the modes after every three or four files that we execute and we'll see at the end of the test after running like 10 12 samples what is the state of the system now before we get started let's try loading a legitimate application in this case we're going to simulate by using hitman pro so let's see what happens if we try to do a hitman pro scan on the system with uh, dr web turned on does it conflict there you go when access to windows system object is blocked for this process 
but it seems our scan is still running so it works now let's go ahead and start running the malware and see if that is blocked so here's malware one and it was successfully able to execute and create a configuration file no alert from dr. web malware 2 and now it says threats detected and neutralized so maybe the cloud is providing some kind of a signature component or maybe it's entirely behavioral based I'm not sure so now it says modification of the user's file is blocked for the process so that's good let's run this one this was successfully able to open some website which may not be very friendly mm, this is not Japanese it's Chinese so that's bad it has created this new file as well okay this one got caught Trojan inject and modification of running application is blocked so that's a malicious action that was prevented let's run a few more in this setting and then we'll move on to the next setting so some of these are being blocked it does seem to work but I just don't think that it's doing enough to protect the system from all this malware At least not at this setting. So let's take a look at task manager and see if we have any malicious processes running. We definitely have some stuff going around. But let's wait and see if any actual damage was done. So we'll run one more and that seems to have been blocked. So now let's move on to the next setting that is uh, medium. Let's see if it does any better with uh, this setting. But before we move on to this, we're going to try to execute Hitman Pro again and we'll see if that runs fine in this setting. Once again, it seems like um, some kind of access was blocked but still seems to be able to scan let's proceed with the malware we're getting a lot of crashes another threat was neutralized I'm still seeing some stuff execute getting a few more pop-up alerts hmm, something popped up another Windows Explorer window so now let's move on to paranoid which is their highest setting and see if uh, it manages to block everything okay now we're getting some questions should we allow this process to modify the Windows system object now here's my complaint about this particular application it does not tell you any thing about the program that you're running it does not provide any information to help you make your decision it just says what it's trying to do but let's say if this was assigned executable it would still say the same thing so it does not try to differentiate between applications at all and that can be pretty annoying because the same action when performed by different programs can have different outcomes for example loading a driver isn't necessarily malicious but can be used for malicious purposes so I think you need some information like how old the file is or um, whether or not it's digitally signed to help decide whether or not you should take that risk but 
this program does not give you any such information. It's just simple allow or block and this is the action. So in this case, I'm just going to block it. Um, let's go ahead and proceed. So in paranoid mode, let's see if Hitman Pro runs. Okay, it seems like our scan isn't really starting. Stuck at initializing. And there you go, this is the recent driver, Windows System 32 Hitman Pro 37.sys. If we do not allow this driver to be loaded, I think Hitman Pro is not going to work. In paranoid mode, it does not work. That is if you select block. But that's okay considering this is called paranoid mode, you're not supposed to use it at this setting, I guess. But let's see if it can actually block all the malware that we execute. Alright, the system has slowed down to a crawl and I'm really struggling to go on here. There's definitely a lot of stuff going on. Even though I'm blocking everything, I don't think the system is clean. And the alerts are just way too many. It's not really usable at the paranoid setting. So I'm just going to end the test right now and uh, we'll lock everything that we get, pop-ups for, and after that I'm going to reboot the system, delete the malware folder, and uh, do some second opinion scans to see if we have any system infections. Alright, I rebooted the system and it seems we don't even have to wait for the scans to complete in this one. It looks like we've hit our katana on a rock because this system is what I would classify as a class 1 disaster. So we've got this virus win32 perite or whatever um, it's named and it has totally taken out the system. It has multiplied like crazy and our system32 folder is totally overwhelmed with different instances of this piece of malware. So we've literally got a thousand plus infections. That is insane. So we've got all sorts of things, hijacked start pages, Trojan agents, backdoor agents, uh, this piece of malware in system. Then there's stuff in program data, there's stuff in app data roaming. A lot of this is active right now. So it's really scary. I mean, it's pretty much as bad as it gets. In fact, many times when I try to infect the system just by having no security product, I just run random malware. I don't end up with the case as bad as this. So that's terrible. Now I know that this is not supposed to be a foolproof solution and that it's only meant to complement your anti-malware solution, but considering they're charging you 26 euros a year for this product, I would definitely expect better results. I mean we've got Verloc over here, fake MS, worm, I mean it's just a plethora of threats. And this system is a malware playground. Cleaning this would be even the world's best sweeper's nightmare. So that is it for this review. Looks like we've shattered our katana. Disappointing news for any samurai fans. 
but it's better to be informed than to be infected. I hope you enjoyed this quick video. Stay tuned for more reviews. Check out some of my other videos and please like the video if you did. This is Leo from the PC Security Channel. Stay informed. Stay secure.